Gordon's model is known by many names. Perpetual growth model, dividend growth model, dividend discount model. And within Gordon's model, there are various possibilities. So let us first talk about all these possibilities within Gordon's model. So I'm sure you have written this heading as uh, Gordon's model. And under that heading, when you write applicability of Gordon's model, you would write Gordon's model, which is also known as dividend growth model, perpetual growth model or dividend discount model can be applied in the following different situations. Number one is a situation of constant growth. You may simply call it constant growth situations. Then we have zero growth situations and then we have variable growth situations which can be also referred to as concept of super normal growth and where we can have two variations within variable growth situations. One is the two stage dividend discount model and the other one is three stage dividend discount model. So please write up this much and then we move ahead. All right friends, once you have completed writing this much, let us move ahead and now we deal with the first scenario that is Gordon's model under constant growth situation. So P0 equals to D1 divided by Ke minus G. Now you know the logical derivation of this formula I have explained already with portfolio topic. I don't want to bring forward that explanation but uh, here we will definitely discuss everything what is relevant. So D1 is the expected dividend receivable by year end, Ke is the equity capitalization rate, P0 is the current market price of the equity share or you may also call it the present value of the share. G stands for growth rate and G itself is a product of B into R. B and R, what are these two variables? R stands for return on equity and that indicates the capacity of the company to generate the profits for its equity shareholders. That is what we call as ROE or return on equity. And the other component B is the retention ratio Retention ratio is basically 1 minus dividend payout ratio. If dividend payout ratio is 40%, it is implied that the company is retaining 60% of its earnings. In other words, whatever profit the company has earned, if a portion of that is paid out as dividend, the balance portion will be the retained earnings and that ratio of retained earnings with the total earnings is what we call as retention ratio. So when retention ratio is multiplied to the return on equity, the result is the growth rate and this is basically the assumption under Gordon's model. So please write up everything what you are finding on screen. This is basically the constant growth situation. All right friends, I'm sure you have completed writing this whole thing. Now we are going to pick up some small, small, simple, simple examples to understand the applicability of Gordon's model. Uh, these small, small, simple examples are also becoming part of your question paper sometimes. And for minor, minor uh, possibility of errors, a student should not ignore it. Because these examples are actually going to be simple examples, what I would strongly advise you is, the moment I display a question over here, if you are not confident about it, you continue watching the video and solve the question along with it. But if you are confident that you can try it out, you should actually pause the video and you try out solving that question and then you can resume the video again and check whether you have done it correct or not. So that practice I would want you to exercise because if you are able to do these basic things on your own, fine. Sometimes what happens when students are attempting these basic basic questions on their own and they end up committing error, you should not worry about that because even that is a good way of learning because it shows you that there are certain aspects which you did not consider or you went wrong and that is where you have to take a little care. So I am leaving it up to you. The next few questions which are questions based on constant growth situations, I would want you to just try out these questions on your own if you are willing to. So let us begin with the first question in this category that is question number two. 
let us read this question a company had 1 lakh equity shares of rupees 10 each the accumulated balance in reserves and surplus was rupees 70 lakhs the expected rate of return on equity is 25% the company follows a policy of retaining 40% of its earnings and distributing 60% as dividends the same policy is expected to continue the expected rate of return for equity shareholders is 25% now here guys uh, please take care of one thing one is the expected rate of return on equity is 25% and the expected rate of return for equity shareholder is 25% don't ever get confused in examination if you get an information like this because this initial line is indicating the return on equity that is indicating company's capacity to generate the return on equity whereas this information is the expected rate of return by the equity shareholder so if you talk about the symbols and variables this is ke whereas this was roe or simply you can symbolize that as small r for return on equity the question is asking you to determine the following book value per share at present expected eps by year end expected dividend per share by year end that is d1 expected growth rate that is g and current value of share as per gordon's model that is p0 so fine we can definitely go ahead and solve this question so first thing that we will consider is the book value now here if you observe you don't have information about assets and liabilities but the question is still asking you to determine the book value per share now how are you going to determine the book value per share when the question doesn't give you information about assets and liabilities so from the balance sheet if you are picking all the assets and subtracting the values of liabilities you will basically land up at nothing but shareholders funds correct because if it is book value basis the shareholders funds is nothing but the share capital and reserves and surplus so instead of taking the approach of asset minus liabilities if you are taking the shareholders funds directly from the books that is share capital plus reserves and surplus it would also result into the same calculation so let us continue ahead once you get the net worth you find that there are no preference shares in the example so you just consider the number of equity shares informed to you as 1 lakh shares and you can instantly determine the book value per share that will be rupees 80 now when the book value per share is rupees 80 expected eps will be the book value per share multiplied by expected return on equity in simple words if the net worth or net asset per share is rupees 80 and company's capacity to generate the return on equity is 25% the resulting eps that you can expect will be rupees 20 per share which is 25% of 80 so please write up these calculations and then i take you ahead all right friends once you have completed writing these calculations let us move ahead and now compute the expected dividend per share now expected eps we have computed and dividend payout ratio for the company is given as 60% so you can simply pick up the expected eps multiplied by dividend payout ratio which would give you the expected dividend per share by year end which is d1 now here comes application of gordon's model for computing the growth rate so growth rate is a product of return on equity and retention ratio so by equation we can say g equals to b into r where b is the retention ratio that is 0.4 or 40% r is return on equity that is 25% or 0.25 so g will be 0.4 into 0.25 and when you do this calculation what you get is 0.10 or 10% so that is the resulting growth rate so write up these calculations and then i take you ahead all right friends once you have completed writing these calculations let us move ahead and we compute the present value of the share as per gordon's model so you apply the gordon's model formula base that is p0 equals to d1 divided by ke minus g you define what is d1 that is rupees 12 you define what is ke that is 25% you define g that is growth rate that is 10% and 
and then substitute these values and you would be getting the final value of the share as rupees 80. So please write up this calculation and that will be end of the solution. Alright friends, once you have completed writing this entire solution, let us move ahead and now take up question number 3. Let us read this question. A company has a book value per share of rupees 137.8. Its return on equity is 15% and follows a policy of retaining 60% of its annual earnings. The opportunity cost of capital is 18%. What is the price of its share? Adopt the perpetual growth model to arrive at your solution. So again, this is a straight simple question. So as I said, if you want to try out this on your own, you can pause the video and do the needful. Else, continue watching the solution. Expected EPS by year end will be book value per share multiplied by return on equity, which will be 15% of 137.80 that comes to rupees 20.67. This will be the expected EPS by year end and the retention ratio informed is 60%. So dividend payout ratio obviously will be 40%. So expected dividend by year end will be 40% of 20.67 that is 8.268. Growth rate is basically return on equity multiplied by retention ratio and that will be 15% into 60% that will be 9% and once you have all this basic data available you can compute the P0 value defining the variables D1 is uh, 8.268, KE is 18% and P0 is what we have to find. So 8.268 divided by 18% minus 9% so it will be basically P0 value resulting into 91.867. So please write up this entire solution and then we move ahead. Alright friends, once you have completed writing this entire solution, let us move ahead and take up the next question that is question number 4. Let us read this question. A share of tension free economy limited is currently having a cost of equity as 18% the retained earnings per share being 37.5% for the year just ended is rupees 3 per share. If anticipated growth rate is 13% per annum, calculate the current price of the share. So how do you approach a question like this? Let me explain some things to you. The retained earnings per share is 37.5% which is representing rupees 3 per share. So that means uh, if retention ratio is 37.5%, the dividend payout ratio will be 1 minus 37.5% and what? It would give you 62.5%. So we will say that if the retained earnings per share is rupees 3, which represents 37.5%, so how much will be the dividend per share that we can find out and we can also find out directly what would be the earnings per share. And all this is for the year just ended. So the dividend that we compute through this ratio will be D0 and anticipated growth rate is 13%. So to arrive at the D1 value, you have to adjust the growth rate to the current dividend and you can then find D1 value. KE is given as 18% and growth rate is also informed you just have to find correct amount of D1. So you first compute D0, adjust the growth rate and you arrive at D1. That was the only typical point in this question. Let us see how to present the solution over here. In your solution, you mentioned that retained earnings that is rupees 3 is 37.5%. So dividend payout ratio has to be 62.5%. Now, if 37.5% is rupees 3, 62.5% will be how much? When you apply that proportion, you get the dividend per share as rupees 5. So EPS will be the amount of dividend per share plus the amount of retained earnings per share. That comes to 5 plus 3, that is rupees 8. Growth rate already given as 13%. D1, that is expected dividend receivable by year end, will be 
growth rate added to your current dividend so the d1 value comes to 5.65 ke is given as 18% applying gordon's model formula when you substitute these values what you get as p0 value is rupees 113 so please write up this entire calculation and that will be end of the solution all right friends once you have completed writing this entire solution let us move ahead and take up the next question that will be question number 5 let us read this question a firm had paid dividend at rupees 2 per share last year the estimated growth of the dividends from the company is estimated to be 5% per annum determine the estimated market price of the equity share if the estimated growth rate of dividends rises to 8% and in the second part it says falls to 3% also find out the present market price of the share given that the required rate of return of equity investors is 15.5% so as such a question without any complication so let us just look into how to present the solution over here in your solution you first determine the present market price by using the gordon's model you put up the formula define the variables and substitute the value of these uh, variables over here you will be getting with 5% growth rate the value of the share comes to rupees 20 so please write up the initial part of the solution and then we will show the revised calculation with the altered growth rates all right friends once you have completed writing this part of the solution let us move ahead and take up the next part what would happen when growth rate rises to 8% per annum the calculation base remains the same just alter the growth rate and if growth rate rises to 8% per annum the value of the share goes up to 28.8 and what will be the market price if the growth rate falls down to just 3% per annum same calculation base just alter the growth rate to 3% and with the reduction in growth rate the value of the share drops to rupees 16.48 so please write up this calculation and that will be end of the solution all right friends once you have completed writing this solution let us move ahead and take up the next important heading that will be gordon's model under zero growth situation so what happens when there is no growth in dividends at all so the p0 calculation will simply be d by k notice one thing this time we are not mentioning this as d0 or d1 it is just d d standing for dividend per share why are we not specifying d0 or d1 because of the zero growth situation if dividends are not going to grow whichever years dividend you take it will be static as a result we don't have to mention whether it is d1 or d0 logically it should be d1 but it will be same as what is the current dividend and that is why simply you are going to take the dividend in the numerator in the denominator under gordon's model we always notice that it is ke minus g but growth rate being zero ke minus 0 will remain ke so let us define these variables d is the expected constant dividend and ke is the equity capitalization rate or expected rate of return by equity shareholders please write up this whole thing and then i take you ahead